I have more continental knitting advice. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people have watched my continental knitting advice video. CR watched it and said the following thing. Can you show us what the ring and middle fingers are doing more closely? And the index finger. What the hell is with the index finger? <laughs> they were asking about the tension mostly of the index finger, which I talk about in a lot of detail in the other video. If you haven't seen the other video, go watch that one and then come back here because I am going to tell you, I'm gonna go through each individual finger and show you what it is doing when you are continental knitting. Here's a big old disclaimer. This is just what my fingers do after years and years and years of continental knitting. It might not be what your fingers end up doing, but if you just kind of want to get a better sense for what's going on with your hands, um, this, this is it. <laughs> first things first, all of your fingers are kind of playing double duty, manipulating the stitches on the needle but also holding the needles at the same time. Yay. <laughs> if you're new to continental knitting or knitting in general, this can make you wish that you had like two or three extra hands and I've totally been there and I totally get it. So let's go through the fingers and give them each a job. We're gonna start with the hand that is holding the yarn. For me, that is my right hand. The pointer finger is the leader, the tension master. It's the index finger's job to keep the yarn tight enough to make a good stitch. This is the only finger that never ever touches the needle. It just kind of hangs out above the needle and guides the yarn where to go. Tension is probably the most difficult thing to get and it really just takes a lot of practice. That finger needs to be pulling the yarn just tight enough that it isn't pulling the yarn out of shape, basically making it too thin. It also needs to make sure that it isn't holding the yarn too loose. It is keeping the yarn at the ready like a good soldier ready for plucking. I think this was two metaphors in one, but hopefully it makes sense. The thumb. The thumb on your yarn hand is kind of like a gate. It just very loosely sits there on the needle, on the stitches on the needle, and holds them in place. Not like death grip in place. We want these stitches to feel like they have the freedom to live their own lives, but they're rowdy teenagers, you know? They want to fly off the end of the needle and just do their own thing. They don't know what's best for them. They need a thumb to keep them under its thumb. So the thumb just kind of hangs out gently, loosely, telling the stitches you got your own lives, but maybe just hang out before the edge of the needle. Don't go jumping off any cliffs just because you see your friends doing it, okay? Is this helpful? The middle finger. I, you know which finger's the middle one. The middle finger is like the bouncer at the club. All the kids are going to the club and they're in line and they're trying to push their way to the front, but the middle finger is like, you. Okay, go. Oh, you. No. Okay, you. One at a time, kids. One at a time. The middle finger catches the stitch, holds it, pushes it along. It's there to keep order firm, but gentle hand. No one's getting kicked out of this club. Everyone can come in, but you gotta wait in line. You gotta wait until I say it's your turn. Ring and pinky fingers. Now, CR wanted to specifically know the middle and ring fingers, but I feel like the ring and pinky fingers are the ones that have the joint job. They're like the grunt laborers that no one sees. They're in the back of the club cooking all the food food, cleaning the floors after everyone leaves. They hold this shit together, but no one ever sees or appreciates them until today. They're kind of the main dudes hanging on to the needle and stabilizing it as it moves. They're making little micro movements that guide the needle along its path. So they have that important needle stabilization role, but they do double duty. They don't have just one job at this place. They do like everything and they're severely underpaid for it. Someone should give them a raise. They are also hanging on to the yarn that's being fed to the pointer finger, the leader, dare I say the manager of the club. They're holding on tight, making sure just enough gets through, but not too much and not too fast. So they're holding down the fort, they're sending reinforcements through, they're just doing a whole lot of work and they're some of the most important players in the knitting game. Don't underestimate them. If you want more advice on how to strengthen the tension release from your pinky and ring fingers, check out 
the other video. Next we have our receiving hand. This is the hand that's holding the other needle that's receiving all the stitches. The pointer finger of your receiving hand is like the catcher in the ride. As the bouncer sends the stitch through into the club, it pats each stitch on the back and says, welcome, may I take your coat? Please have a seat. The drink menu is on the table. It just gently grabs each stitch, makes sure it's there, scoots it along its way. It's very helpful. The thumb on the receiving hand is kind of like an assistant to the yarn hand's needle. I find when I'm knitting that my receiving hand's thumb kind of pops over and pushes that first needle back to help get the stitches to the front. It's just real friendly, maybe a little too friendly. Like, you're always grateful for the help, but you're kind of like, hey man, maybe help, but with a little more personal space. But the thumb knows, the thumb knows what you really need. You need to be shoved out of the way to make room for the next guy. That is the thumb's job. Honestly, like the rest of the fingers on the receiving hand are kind of just more cooks in the kitchen. They're stabilizers. They're keeping the needle stable. I realized in prepping for this video that I actually had no idea which fingers on this hand actually like manipulate the needle and make it do its thing. I had to play around with removing fingers and seeing how I did to figure out that it's mainly the pinky in addition to the thumb and forefinger that are manipulating the needle. So there you have it. All 10 fingers and what they do to run the nightclub that is your knitting project. Was this video helpful? I don't know. If it helped, let me know. If it was just confusing beyond reason, don't tell me. I don't want to know. If you did watch this video, I really appreciate it. I would like to make a small request of you, kind viewer. If you are watching this before February 20th, 2018, you may or may not be aware that YouTube has changed its monetization policies. Any channel that hasn't reached 4,000 hours of view time in the past 365 days on February 20th will be demonetized and removed from the partner program. This channel is pretty close to hitting that, but it would help me to have a little bit more of a push. So if you like what I put on these YouTubes and you would like to support me, I've linked to some of my playlists in the video description. You can watch all of my hoop tutorials and learn how to hula hoop. You can watch all of my Etsy tutorials and learn how to create an Etsy shop. Or you can just watch a bunch of the videos that have inexplicably gotten a lot of views for reasons I can't explain. <laughs> I don't think you have to listen to them with sound for it to count as a view. Thank you, thank you for putting up with that little mini self promo. My name is Jess. I make videos when I do. I hope you are having a beautiful day and I will see you the next time I make a video. Goodbye. Hey. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> no, let go.